Welcome everyone, this is Sean with MTG808 Jr. and today we're going to be playing through an MTG Arena um, Holiday Popper event. Um, this event, I believe it's running until January 4th, it's free to enter, and if you um, get five wins before you get your two losses, then you get a promo alternate art flower mines research. And then if you get one through four wins, um, then you get your promo alternate art land of war elves. So, um, you know, not that great prizes, but it is free and it is just an opportunity to play some standard proper, which is, um, if, you know, in my opinion, a really good format. Um, and of course, a chance to feature some of the decks that I think are going to be good moving forward. So today we're going to be playing um, Black Red Control. Um, Control, I think, is pretty well positioned. We just saw a bunch of white aggro decks featuring Healer's Hawk um, dominate the U Standard Popper uh, Championship Scholarship Tournament, and I think that this is just the natural counter to the white aggro decks. Um, and, and this deck still has a little bit of game um, against the blue control decks. Um, if you're able to get your loop, then um, you know, you're know you in a pretty good spot. But just um, let me start with explaining the backbone of this deck. So um, this deck features um, four G2 Chronicler, which uh, is essentially a six drop, six mana, one three, when it comes into play, return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Um, the loop, or the the cool interaction with G2 Chronicler is you get back um, Soul Salvage with it. So Soul Salvage, three mana, return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then um, if you have more G2 Chroniclers in your graveyard, or that your first G2 Chronicler dies, then you can Soul Salvage, get back G2 Chronicler, plus another creature, and then you just keep the loop going forever. Um, you This deck requires you, or in order to play the Soul Salvage engine, you need to play a ton of creatures, so Hired Poisoner is a uh, removal spell that uh, or I guess it's a creature that is actually a removal spell. Uh, you know, one mono, one one death touch. Dusk Legion Zealot, two mono, one one comes into play. You lose a life and you draw a card. So it's kind of like a speed bump. Um, it can pressure your opponent, and um, you know it's just an awesome target for Soul Salvage. Burglar Rat, just the opposite of Dusk Legion Zealot, two mono, one one. When it comes into play, they discard a card. Um, so you know these. This is kind of like your your card advantage dudes and then you get them back with soul salvage and then um of course g2 chronicler and then towards the top of our curve we have um oh well, uh i must have clicked on this wind grace acolyte we have two copies two copies of wind grace acolyte um, 5 mana, 3, 2, flying. When it enters the battlefield, put the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard, and you gain 3 life. So gaining the life is important, because we are paying life to draw cards with Dark Bargain and Dusk Legion Zealot. Um, so the life gain is important, but also... Um, putting the top three cards of your library into your graveyard is a really good bonus for this deck because we're playing G2 Chronicler and Soul Salvage, which both care about having cards in your graveyard. So when Grace Acolyte is a good fit. And then um, just to top off the curve, we have one Queen's Agent, six mana, three, three lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, it explores, which means if you reveal the top card of your deck, if it is a uh, land, you draw it. If it's not a land, you get a plus one, plus one counter, and then you can choose to keep it on top or put it in your graveyard. Um... So Queen's Agent just kind of, um, you know, the, the life gain is important, and then, um, you know, it just gives us another option of what to have at the top of our deck. There are some situations when the game goes really long where we um, have to worry about decking ourselves, so we don't want to just continuously loop win Grace Acolyte to try to win the game, and uh, none of our other creatures are really that good at winning the game, so uh, we don't want only win Grace Acolyte at the top of our curve. Um, but those are the creatures. Um, we are only playing three soul salvage because e despite it being part of our loop and kind of the backbone of the deck, um, drawing them early um, and not having creatures in your graveyard um, is one of the ways to w to lose against aggro. So we're only playing three. Um, Dark Bargain is better 
uh, early in the game when you don't have as many creatures in your graveyard and you're just trying to make your land drop. So we're playing three Soul Salvage, three Dark Bargain. And then um, the rest of the deck is just a pile of removal. Um, Sheevan Fire, very, very flexible, right? You can shock something or later in the game you can um, deal four damage to something. Moment of Craving, again, the life gain is really important. Just kill small creatures, keeps us alive. Bombard. Um, this there's very few creatures in this format that um, don't die to bombard, so it's just kind of like a three mana kill anything. Um, in our real life tournaments, we allow downshifted um, downshifted cards are legal, so murder would be in this deck um, if we were playing this in real life. But um, bombard is a is a fine substitute. Um, Eviscerate. Honestly, I just didn't want to um, <laughs> spend a, a common wild card crafting another bombard. Um, Rivals of Ixalan is one of the least um, accessible uh, sets on Magic Arena. I have not spent any money on my account yet, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, but that means that I need to, um, you know, manage my wild cards carefully. So instead of playing a second bombard, I'm just playing an Eviscerate. It's very similar in what it does. Um, and then. Uh, at the top of our removal curve, we have Deadly Visit. Five mana, deal you know, deal with any creature in play, and then Surveil 2 is essentially draw a card. Um, if you're at the point in the game where lands don't matter anymore, um, then putting lands into your graveyard is kind of like drawing a card. Um, this deck is very mana hungry though, so um, you know that that situation isn't always the case. Um, you know when you start looping Gitu Chronicler and Soul Salvage, you know the loop costs nine mana each turn, and then if you want to play other stuff in that turn as well, then you need more than nine mana. Um, so you know you're you're not always going to be binning lands with Deadly Visit, but um, the, having the Surveil too is is very nice. The the other option here would be Contract Killing. Um, five mana, destroy target creature, and make two treasures, um, since the deck is kind of mana-hungry, but I, I think um, having the card selection is just a little more important, so I like Deadly Visit. We are only playing 23 lands. Um, the deck can operate fine off of just six lands, um, and you know, getting mono-flooded mono is one of the ways to, to lose to aggro, so we are only playing 23. Um, we do have the Dusk Legion Zealots and the Dark Bargains to kind of help smooth things over. Um, and the deadly visits. So, um, you know, don't usually in, in real standard control decks usually play more. Um, standard popper, since the power level is so low, um, it's not super imperative that we like hit our fifth land on turn five. Um, you know, we, we can just turtle around with our one, two, and three mono creatures um, or spells for a, a good portion of the game. But I if we get flooded, then we usually just lose. So, in general, standard popper decks tend to be playing less lands, um, but that's just the way it is. So, that's the deck that we're going to be running. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and enter this event. Hopefully, we'll string together five wins and we'll, um, you know, be able to... Uh, here we go. We'll be able to uh, show off the power of a control deck. So <laughs> the the white aggro decks dominated the scholarship tournament um, in early December, and all day long I was just telling the kids like somebody needed to just like bring a good control deck to this tournament. There was one kid that brought a control deck, and he um, missed top eight. I was like, man, a control deck would just clean up this tournament. Um, and, and then I was saying that all day, and then promptly lost to the mono white aggro deck in the in the end boss match with playing blue black control. But I, but I think red black control has a much better um, aggro matchup because Sheevan Fire is just such a flexible removal spell. Um, yeah, this is a perfectly serviceable hand. Um, it is kind of heavy on lands, but you know once once we get our um, card advantage spells, then lands are exactly what we're gonna want. So probably going to lead with hired poisoner here unless he goes like turn one healer's hawk oh we're we're on the play so we're definitely leading with hired poisoner the, th this deck is really good at getting in chip damage so it would not surprise me if this hired poisoner dealt like two to two to five damage um over the course of this game so it, it, blue red is usually control he might be playing blue red tempo um, we'll find out if he discards like a Sonic Assault here, then he might, he's probably Blue Red Temple or Maximize Altitude. Um, but I, okay, he's probably Control. I, I've seen a lot of, um, Control. I, I, I've played through one of these cues already with this deck, 
and the vast majority of the decks I played against were control. So, well, maybe he is playing tempo. We're probably we're just gonna sheave and fire that. I don't I don't know what other better targets we're gonna have for a sheave and fire. So we're just gonna fire it off while we can. Uh, so this is what I was talking about with uh, getting getting mana flooded. Um, you know, we we do have a lot of good top decks. Um, Dark Bargain is probably our best draw here. Dusk Legion Zealot would be great. Um, uh, I would I would even take a G2 Chronicler because that or a Soul Salvage, even though n neither of them are particularly live right now. Um, just having one half of our um, end game loop will um you know do a lot to kind of just progress our position like the the game is going to go long so uh, okay so it looks like he's blue red tempo not control i don't really want to trade this hired poisoner with a goblin token so i'm just gonna uh plan to block up with a burglar rat and uh hope to draw some action here Ah, that's not good. He unmulliganed. Oh, wow, I'm surprised he didn't attack. Not going to burn a Bombard on a Goblin token, so we're just going to keep making our land drops and uh, and passing. Um, let's see. I mean, like, as long as he doesn't drop, like, a Cold Water Snapper or anything, then I, I think we're going to be fine. But it's usually like blue black or blue white that are playing the cold water snapper end game. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna bombard it in response. Excuse me, just because um, he he might be attacking with both now that he feels a little more emboldened. So I'm gonna wait. I I guess like I can get punished here by. I don't even know. Blink of an eye is not even that good because he can't kick it. Dive down would obviously be great, but not much I could have done about that anyway. Or he probably has like syncopate in his hand or maybe a cancel maybe he's thinking about if he wants to burn a cancel on saving his 3-3 flyer but the fact that he sat that long um makes me think that he has something okay so i'm gonna attack with burglar rat here he's probably not gonna block but if he does and it opens up my hired poisoner start attacking him if he does not block then he'll probably attack me back at which point i can crack him back with the hired poisoners um and since i'm up on life i'm i'm fine making this uh this attack mm. since uh these games are no sideboards i'm not really that worried about a dual shot or anything out of him Although, it would be really sweet right here. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll take my one for one. If he wants to attack me, then I'll take it and just crack him back for two. I'm, I'm, I would be fine with that race. He does have two cards in his hand, so... Oh, okay. That was a good card for him to have. I'm surprised. Oh, wow, and he didn't attack. I wonder what he has. That was a really good draw for us. Probably like our second best draw. I think Dark Bargain is still our best draw. But Queen's Agent is pretty darn good. 
I'm pretty sure he blocks this at this point. Wow. Well, I sure am... And he didn't even block. That has to be a misclick. Yeah, he said oops. Okay. Well, getting these lands out of the way... Well, if he wants to triple block my Queen's Agent, I think I just let that happen. Like, Queen's Agent, just even just having it in my yard, because I have three Soul Salvages in the deck, I think is fine. Yeah, don't attack here, buddy. That Direct Current is not actually in your hand. Um... Drawing that land there, maybe I don't want to trade the Queen's Agent yet. So I'm just going to attack with the Burglar Rat. If he blocks, then that means I can start attacking with my Queen's Agent because he won't be able to triple block it anymore. Um, since Direct Current is a sorcery. He can attack me here, but then that opens me up to crack him back and just gain the life back. So I, I think him blocking there was a really bad block. Ooh, that was a really good card to draw. I don't know if I want to cast it. If he kills this Queen's Agent, then I'm for sure going to cast it. Um, I wish I had like a Dusk Legion Zealot or a Gitu Chronicler in my graveyard. Gitu Chronicler would just put this game away. He would have to have like a Cancel, a Negate, or a Essence Scatter to win this game if I had a Gitu Chronicler in my graveyard. Huh. So I could Soul Salvage back Burglar Rat Hired Poisoner, but I don't think I care. Like, if this Queen's Agent is just going uncontested, then I, I think I'm just sitting pretty. And then if he does draw an answer, then I'll just Soul Salvage it back. So no, no point burning the Soul Salvage this early. interesting i wonder if he has um a sacrifice effect i don't know fling rotated out and the new fling is an uncommon i think so i don't think he can punish me with this act of treason uh okay okay so we we have our combo here um I'm not going to play Chronicler just yet. I, like my, my highest impact play here is still just Queen's Agent. But yeah, uh, and I'm pretty sure this guy is a new player. He just keeps making um, keep making mistakes. Yeah, okay. This Queen's Agent is just going to clean up. I think I Gitu Chronicler back. Uh, I'm just going to kill the Fire Urchin. Deadly Visit will get me closer to some more action. Uh, yeah, I like both these cards. So we're going to keep both. And still no point in Soul Salvaging yet. This Queen's Agent is just mopping the floor with my opponent. Okay, yeah, he sees he doesn't have an answer to Queen's Agent. So there we go. Chalk one up for the W's. Alright. Yeah. I'm really disappointed that they don't give you common cards in MTG Arena. They give you a bunch of uncommons. Like, they just throw uncommons at you. Um, but they never give you commons, so, like, um, they haven't had, I, I think they currently have their first, um, Ixalan, um, limited event, and I've done one, but other than that, like, all my Ixalan commons, I've had to, um, 
I've had to wild card them. This is an unkeepable hand. If if I had one um, uh, mountain in that hand, I would have kept. I am on the play, so I'm pretty hesitant to go down to... Um, I do have more swamps in the deck than... I'm going to keep this. I get a scry. That's going on the bottom. And then any swamp here turns this hand into an amazing hand. Well, it turns it into a reasonable hand. That's not a swamp. So we've got one more draw step before we start hurting. Okay, well, our opponent isn't doing anything yet, so we might be okay. There isn't anything, like, super overpowered in this, um... Oh, man, he's a control. Although this is a reasonable hand against control. Like, all the cards here, except for Sheevan Fire, are fine against control. Um, but yeah, there, there aren't any, like, super overpowered cards in this format where... You know, if if I stumble on lands, um, that I'm going to just get punished by, you know, him playing out something super powerful. Like if if he plays like a cold water snapper, um, that would be pretty hard for me to answer. But besides that, I, I guess he could start a soul salvage loop. Okay, still just can't do anything. So I I don't think going to five with um. Uh, going to five on the play would have given me too much higher percentage to win this game. Like this, this hand was pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, that. Well, it, it makes me feel better about my odds this game. Um. Yeah. Okay, we got our swamp. So now we can get on the board. So what was this? This was our third, fourth. This was our, excuse me, this was our fifth turn. And we, um, we, we didn't draw our, a swamp until our fifth turn, so we missed our third and fourth land drops, played our third land on turn five, and this, uh, this board looks reasonable. Granted, our opponent did not play. I'm confused. So they notion rained, surveilled a land into the graveyard, and then I'm not sure how this land got into the graveyard. If they surveilled both lands into the graveyard, then they would have been next to each other. Because he discarded the six drop. Oh, I, I think our opponent just... Okay, we're blocking here. I think our opponent just like clicked to his end step and then tried to play the land, but had to discard it instead. Okay, that must be it. So we uh, we are getting a little lucky here, getting some lucky breaks against our opponents. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna have a better target for this Sheevan Fire, but might as well just use it. If we draw a land here, then uh, we're gonna want to use our mana doing other stuff, and you know, our, I don't know what he's playing exactly, but our our life total might be relevant. Uh, okay. Uh, we don't have two targets yet for Soul Salvage, so we're just going to run out Hired Poisoner. It's probably just going to die, but that's fine. We really just want to, you know, not do nothing while we hope to draw lands for Dark Bargain. Oh, okay, so our Hired Poisoner is going to get to trade with a Whisper Agent or a Removal Spell. We'll find out. He kept it on top. Ooh, okay, so he gets our Queen's Agent here, but that's fine. That's arguably the worst card in our hand. And it also turns on our Soul Salvages, so... Yeah, that's fine. How 
I wonder if that's the card he kept on top with Whisper Agent. Ooh, okay. So now he's starting to pressure us a little bit. If we don't draw a land, I'm probably just going to fire off the Soul Salvage to get back the Burglar Rat and the Queen's Agent. Um, okay, well, we did draw a land, but we're still just going to fire off the Soul Salvage. We have to use our mana this turn. Um, being this far behind on the board, we, he's going to put us to 12 this turn. Um, we, we just needed to not do nothing that turn, so the Soul Salvage was the best we had. Good thing he uh, used that Divest, otherwise it would have been a pretty measly Soul Salvage. Yep, we're at 12. Let's see what he's got. He's got nothing. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I'm just going to run out these burglar rats. I get to use all my mana and whittle away at his hand, which is probably full of spells since he stopped playing lands a while ago. He did not play Doom Descendant last turn. Does Is he, like, holding a syncopate? And he just doesn't want to syncopate this burglar rat? Why did he not play Doom Descendant last turn? He probably has another Whisper Agent then. Discarded Vicious Offering. What the heck is in this guy's hand? Okay, I'm just going to run the double blocks. Him discarding the Vicious Offering makes me think that he has a removal spell, so um, double blocking here kind of opens myself up to a removal spell by him. But honestly, I just need... I, like, I'd, I'd much rather him spend his mana um, killing a Burglar Rat with a card um, than... Okay, that's fine. Then, um, you know, adding more creatures to the board since I have a pretty slow hand here, but um, if he doesn't add a creature to the board here, then I will just Dark Bargain on my turn, hopefully hit my 5th and 6th land, and then uh, be able to play Queen's Agent the following turn. We'll see. Ooh, okay. So I think we're going to need to Soul Salvage and get back to Hired Poisoner and play it. That was a good draw. But that means we wouldn't be using all of our mana this turn. And we're at 12, so I am going to Soul Salvage and just get back the Hired Poisoner and play it. This allows us to use all our mana this turn. It allows us to... Um, you know, start contesting the board presence that he has, and, um, you know, sets us up next turn to use all of our mana, um, while still interacting with the board. Okay, try make this trade again. Let's see if he has another Dazzling Light. Okay, that's good. And Vampire Neonate. Okay, um, yeah, I'm not gonna do nothing just yet. I'm gonna wait to moment of craving the water trap weaver. But I'm definitely winning on the card advantage front. Just got to burglar at him four times this game. Wow. Yeah, this could have been a very different game if he had um, not misclicked that land. 
and then this he surveilled that land so he could very could have well could have played cold water snapper this game if um he didn't make that misclick so we might have just gotten really lucky here um but you know having hired poisoner um you know that's a decent answer to cold water snapper queen's agent if we get to f um six mono would also be a, a decent way to race a cold water snapper so let's see what he's got We've got a pretty healthy life total. He's going to start just dumping mana into this neonate. Oh, we're playing a wish coin crab. Dusk Legion Zealot. Since we don't have good targets for the moment of craving, playing the Zealot and the moment of craving doesn't guarantee that I'm going to get good use out of my mana here, so I'm just going to snap off this Dark Bargain. Definitely going to take Cinder Barons and then probably soul salvage like he he could just get that card out of his hand um before i have a chance to play the burglar rat whereas soul salvage um you know it, it can get back hired poisoner or a burglar rat or this dusk legion zealot if he attacks with wish coin crab would i block i don't think so but having this burglar rat in play is not going to be doing too much so maybe it you know, this is the best use for my Burglar Rat. Um, I'm going to wait. I, I don't think that chump blocking at this point is going to be too impactful. Doom to center. Okay, yeah, so my Burglar Rat will have a better use then. He is going to get to... Da -da -da -da. He's going to get to drain me with the Neonate. But I think I'm just going to fire off this deadly visit. And then hopefully that will get me closer to some lands for... And then this Queen's Agent will hopefully take over this game. Ah, uh, yeah. I need lands, Dak. Come on. Luckily that Gitu Chronicler being in the graveyard is actually very, very relevant. So having getting to surveil that to the graveyard is actually fine. But I do need to f eventually find an answer to this neonate. Interesting. Okay, I am going to block. Come on, land. Give me a land. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah, I think I'm gonna... I'm gonna moment of craving the token, and then either bombard... I, I would like to bombard the neonate, but if he plays a spell, then I have to bombard the, the cyclops. Um, which will give him one more activation with the Neonate, but, you know, I'm giving up one, one point of life for a potential save on three points of life, so. And I am going to be gaining two with the Moment of Craving, so. Maybe I do just want to kill the Piston Fist Cyclops anyway. Yeah, I, I think I do, because I want this Queen's Agent to take over, and Cyclops is kind of an answer to Queen's Agent. I would have been pretty sad if um, I drew Eviscerate here instead of Bombard. Um, so, maybe I should just burn that wild card. To get that second Bombard. But these tournaments are just so casual. Like, burning wild cards right before a new set comes out just seems... Seems like a bad call. Like, I did burn a wild card to get my fourth moment of craving. I burnt a wild card to... Okay, well, there's a land. 
Um, what to do? I think. I think I want a dark bargain here. Yeah, because I, I just want to draw an answer to this neonate. Or. Hmm. Okay, I am going to take the land and the Gitu Chronicler. And then. Play the land. And then I play Dusk Legion Zealot. So my, my life total is getting kind of low. Um. There, there's an answer to the neonate. But um, hope I, I'm really planning on just this uh, Queen's agent taking over the game. If he has an answer for it, then I, I'll get to soul salvage it. I can find time to even fire the neonate in between all of that. Um, so, unless he drops like a cold water snapper or something here, I, I think I'm I'm looking pretty good. Oh, this does not have Defender. Short Sword is um really good against my deck. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna run out the Queen's Agent. If he has Syncopate, that's like a huge blowout for us. But if he has any other card in his hand, then Queen's Agent is just the clear best play here. I really just want more lands, so I'm going to put that in my graveyard. Okay, hopefully we get to connect with this Queen's Agent. I think if we connect with this Queen's Agent, there's no way we're losing this game. Because we have the Soul Salvage Key 2 Chronicler loop here. And his only hope is really to just kill us before we um, have enough time to to do stuff. But even if he does kill the Queen's Agent, we're, we're still looking pretty good. Like, Moment of Craving, make sure that we're not going to die. Oh... That's a pain. Defender. Uh, well, that's frustrating. Okay, I think I'm just going to go ahead and kill the neonate then. He's going to drain us, and then now we get to just take over the game. We are at three. But we have this moment of craving, and we have our Gitu Chronicler loop. If we just drew lands for the next, like, three turns, I think that would be our best draws, honestly. Wishcoin Crab. Gets blanked by my Queen's Agent with Deep Freeze on it. Okay, well, ask and you shall receive. Let's see if he wants to trade his crab for our hired poisoner. I think we just pick up deadly visit here. Deadly Visit, well, it's kind of like hard draw, because it'll get us closer to more lands and or Wind Grace Acolytes. I think if we get a Wind Grace Acolyte into the loop here, then uh, then we lock up this game, because unless he's playing like Sovereign Spite or something, I, I don't think that we're going to lose at all. When it dies, return it to its hand. Okay. And it's huge. Look at it. It's a 4-7. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past him to have a Sovereign's Bite in his deck. He, the, I mean, this his deck is just kind of like a mishmash of um, blue and black creatures. 
or blue and black spells, I should say. So maybe we want to just keep Moment of Craving open. So that we don't just straight die to Sovereign's Bite. Well, he is going to get this back thanks to his Demonic Vigor, but we're still going to cast it. Uh, okay, we will keep both of these on top. Um, I think we can put Wingrace Acolyte on top. No... Let's keep the Chronicler on top. Alright, yeah. The rest of this game is just a formality. We have got this one locked up. it again. That's a good card. Kept one card on top. Arcane Flight. Well, that is a surprise. Good thing we kept that moment of craving open. Yeah, we want lands. And I think at this point we can... I think we have another Gitu Chronicler in our yard, so we can just fire off Soul Salvage. Yeah, we have one more Chronicler. So I'm going to fire off the Soul Salvage, get back the Chronicler, and he's got cards in his hand, so I'll get back Rat. on the bottom. So let's see, I'm gonna have four mana. I can Gitu Chronicler. Well, 
Well, I'm gonna attack with everyone first, because if he blocks one, then I can G2 Chronicler and get back, um, Bombard and then kill the Sphinx. And if he doesn't block, then I can just take the hit from the Sphinx and kill him on the crackback if I play Windgrace Acolyte and... So now, he can't attack because we can just take it and then kill him on the crackback, so he has to sit back and play defense, but then if we draw land, then we can G2 Chronicler and Deadly Visit the Cloud Reader Sphinx. So I think, I think we got this game. He still has two cards in his hand, so he could, ooh. That was a... And now we're one shy of killing him. But we did draw our land, so we get to kill him with a deadly visit. If we didn't draw a land, then we could have um, gotten back Moment of Craving just to not die. But drawing that land means that we get to just answer this with deadly visit. Hmm. Alright, this was a little closer than I would have liked, but this is also the game that we um, didn't draw a uh, Black Source until turn 5 and Mulligan to 5, so I'd say uh, I'd say this game went well. I, I think we definitely got lucky that our opponent misclicked on turn 4. But um, I think we are slightly... Um, an underdog to these um, blue decks, like our deck, is definitely hoping to prey on the um, on the aggro decks. Uh, okay, this. Uh. What am I playing? I'm playing like 11, I'm playing like 11, 8, and then 4 dual lands, 11 swamps. I feel like I should not be having this many mono problems. I guess I could be playing Evolving Wilds on top of Cinder Barons. But I mean, th this hand is fine. I'm, I shouldn't be complaining. Especially, uh, I'm assuming he's playing aggro, so this is a fine hand against aggro. Red white is usually aggro. Silverbeak Griffin, Healer's Hawk. Double Healer's Hawk. That might be tough to race. Okay, well there's a mountain. Let's uh, get in. So I could Moment of Craving now, or I could wait and try and see if he plays Knightly Valor. Um, but he could also just play like Moment of Triumph and save his Healer's Hawk, so I, I think I'd rather just fire it off now and get the trade. Really wish this was a Bombard. <laughs> Seems to be the theme of our... Um... Ooh, nice. Well, we're 
we're gonna attack. Does he have the shock? He has the shock. No, that means that we traded one damage for two damage when we're on our back foot. Maybe that was a greedy attack. Okay. Let's see. Can we afford to Dark Bargain here? He's only got one card left in his hand. And I think there's a good chance that we can use five mana next turn. So I'm going to take the slightly riskier line and uh, Dark Bargain at the end of his turn. We'll see. If he has, like, Inspired Charge or something here, then we for sure get punished, but... I think the payoff is worth the risk. So he's just not attacking with the Drill Master. That's fine. We go to 13, we're gonna drop to 11. And he's got nothing. So we get to cast Dark Bargain, and I'm going to take these two. We can always Soul Salvage back the Chronicler. Okay, oh, and there's a Chronicler anyway. So I am going to... Let's see, I'm going to Deadly Visit... No, I'm going to play the tap land and then eviscerate because I need the double red. So I'm going to eviscerate the 2-1. Just trying to stem the bleeding here. His life total is pretty irrelevant. Once we once we stabilize, then um, his life total doesn't matter. So I'd rather just pad my life total by killing the 2-1 instead of killing the lifelink creature. I guess eventually Chronicler blocks the 2-1 though, so... Maybe maybe we wanted to kill the Healer's Hawk since it has evasion. Yeah, I could see that. Snapping off this trade. This means he probably drew another ground creature. Why didn't he do that first? Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to play G2 Chronicler and get back another moment of craving. Mm, I could get back Dark Bargain. I think that would be pretty greedy. Yeah, I'm going to just get back Moment of Craving. Because <laughs> really we should be at 5. We shouldn't have been able to get that block off on him. Okay, I'm glad I took that Moment of Craving. Because we should be at 2 right now. Uh, I'm just going to snap these off now so that we don't get blown out by any pump spells. And now... Okay, let's get that last card out of his hand. It's probably a land. Or maybe it might be a Luminous Bonds or a Sheevan Fire. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then we're gonna... Good thing we have another G2 Chronicler in here. And then the only other target we have is Hired Poisoner. Might as well run out Hired Poisoner. He might Radiant Lightning us again, but... 
That's fine. Okay, now... We are getting back Dark Bargain since we don't have any more creatures to get back with Soul Salvage. That Luminous Bonds is really um, cramping my style over here. If I draw another Soul Salvage, I might just deadly visit my own Gitu Chronicler. Snap this off first. I'll uh, take the two spells. I'm not going to play the last Hired Poisoner into a potential Radiant Lightning, but I am just going to bash him for three. Okay, yeah. He sees the writing on the wall. I think that might have been a little preemptive of him, but... Okay. We got a Howling Golem. Yay! More uncommons. Okay. So, just given the way that this game, these games have played out, I think the deck might want one more Windgrace Acolyte and or Queen's Agent. Um, I'm not sure what we would cut. Probably one of the removal spells. Um... But yeah, the life gain has been a, a choke point for us so far, and just being able to close out games, right? Like, our 1-1 one, one value creatures aren't the greatest at closing out games. This hand is fine. Um, not the greatest. If he's an aggro deck, then we might have to play these Gitu Chroniclers out early. But we're on the draw. We have, like, good speed bumps in our hand. He mulliganed to 6. So, um... Yeah, we're going to keep this. No healer's hawk turn one. Yeah. Okay, definitely going to snap off this moment of craving on this. Well, I guess unless he wants to block, which I doubt, but I'll give him the option. Okay. We're just going to fire this off. Okay. We really need to draw lands. Him doing nothing on turns one and three makes me think that he might be a two color deck and he's just mana screwed. just mono white silver beat griffin is only really that get that good a mono white We'll snap off this trade. He might have Adamant Will or Gideon's Reproach or something, but we're not ever going to not make that block. Ooh, that's a good card against us here. Not only does it fly, but it gives him value. We don't want to trade our, our Hired Poisoners for it. 
Ooh. Uh, we only have one hired poisoner left in the deck. So we have more Sheevan fires. So I'm going to tap like this. I really just want to draw land, though. There we go. And since we have this soul salvage in our hand, I think I'm comfortable making this attack. He'll probably just snap off the block. Um, yeah, okay, so he wants to race, which makes sense. He has a healer's hawk. But if we draw our fifth land... Oh, okay, Angel of Dawn is a good reason for him to want to race as well. That is not a land. Okay, well, let's get in with our hired poisoners. Maybe he'll block with Sky Scanner. Nope. Let's draw a land deck. That's not good. Yeah, okay. Right on time. As long as he doesn't have Adamant Will, this should be a really good... Um, I want both of these cards. I like this guy's deck. This is a, a good build of Mono White. The Lead Ev Guardian to kind of hold the ground and then just... I, I imagine he has Inspired Charge and stuff like that in his deck. Um, which would actually kill us here, so... Um, maybe we should have put Sheevan Fire on top. Um, but Lead Ev Guardian to hold the ground and then um, a bunch of Flyers to kind of win in the air. Ooh, okay. Luma's Bonds on the Hired Poisoner, okay. This puts us to five. He's got no cards in his hand. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. If he blocks, then we get two. Okay. So if I kick the Sheevan Fire on the Parhelion Patrol, then yeah, he has a lot of outs here to kill me, but he has all those same outs to kill me if I take any other lines, so we are just going to do it. Inspired charge kills us, regular charge kills us, Angel of Dawn kills us, uh, Cavalry Drill Master kills us, that was a good draw, that was a good draw too. Uh... Okay, 
I am not scared anymore. Hey, Angel Dawn would still be pretty good. Oh, he's attacking with everybody. Okay, let's see what he's got. like that. Maybe I should have attacked with the key to Chronicler too. I forgot that I'm going to play another one here. Um, I think I just get back Moment of Craving again. The life gain is going to be very relevant. And I think he's just dead, unless he drew something very high impact. If he drew a land, then he's dead. If he drew a creature, then he's dead. If he drew... Okay, Luminous Bonds, he's still dead, unless he has a creature too. Alright, that was a good game. Yeah, all right. Let's open this pack. Woo! Oh, yeah, common wild card. Those are a lot rarer than you would think. Uh, into the popper. All right, so we're 4-0. Let's see if we can get that fifth win. I will keep this. We're on the play. We might stumble a little bit until we get to four lands, but I think once we get to four lands, so we're going to be good. Burglar Rat is good early. Sheep and Fire is good early. Buy us some time to hopefully draw into our fourth land. That's a good magic card. I'm going to play Burglar Rat here just to use all my mana. There's a good chance I draw another 2 mana spell next turn. Um, and then I can play Sheep and Fire and the 2 mana spell. Another Burglar Rat, Dusk Legion Zealot, or Moment of Craving would all be really good draws here. So I'm just going for the mana efficiency. Ooh, that is not a good combat trick. There are so many better combat tricks um, that White can play there. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to kill the Silverbeak Griffin instead. Um, Alright, so there's our fourth land. This Dark Bargain means that we're going to get to um, get our engine going. Yeah, as you see this game and as... Um, I, you probably saw last game as well. Um, Soul Salvage is really bad early in the game. Or, like, if your opponent is playing, like, mono flyers and you're not making trades, then... Uh, okay, I'm completely fine with you. Moment of triumphing to gain four life and deal me two damage. That's fine. Ooh, I am tempted to use this Burglar Rat to get his last card. But I think... I'm going to go for the money efficient play here. There's a good chance that um, he'll still have just one card left in his hand next turn, too. No, oh, never mind. Oh 
no. All of the life gain. All of it. Um, okay, so we want Swamp and Queen's Agent. to play the deadly visit on the healer's hawk and then hopefully hit a land there we go get that hired poisoner out of here we don't need you and then we're gonna play queen's agent next turn So if he rips Luminous Bonds next turn, then he's going to put us to 5, and we might be in a little bit of trouble. But, um... Do we have two Hired Poisoners in here? We just have one Hired Poisoner. Uh... Sure, I will keep this. Because then he can't really, he can't double block. Um, when we attack. Mm, let's draw a card first. We do not have a G2 Chronicler left in here yet. He knows we have the Bombard in our hand. Why would he do this? I'm just going to play this. We might be able to catch a combat trick with it later, but in all honesty, I just... I think the board presence at this point is more important. So if he does ever kill this Queen's Agent, then we get to Soul Salvage it back. He's got infinite life from all of his moment of triumphs and healers, hawks, and such, but this is going to be pretty hard for him to um, come back from. Luminous Bonds would be pretty irritating here, because then we wouldn't be able to soul salvage back the Queen's Agent. But I feel like the Queen's Agent has already done its job. We've gained like 12, 16 life off of it. these Dusk Legion Zealots to get into the graveyard so that we can uh, get them back and start drawing cards. Chomp blocking? That is not our recipe for success, sir. Maybe he'll gang block. Oh, no, never mind. Just trying to get... Hmm. 
Yeah, so this is this is a trap that I see lots of new players um, falling into. Like he's he's playing not to lose right now, but he should be playing to um, make trades because the only way that he is actually going to win the game eventually is if he traded off with this queen's agent. Now he he doesn't know I have the soul salvage, um, so that you know if he did trade with the queen's agent, then I just get it back. But um, you know he's he's in a pretty bad position and chump blocking is only making it worse so what he should be doing here is um trying to set up trades um or favorable blocks on my creatures mm, just for the rubbins I think this puts him to one. Yeah, because him just throwing away creatures every turn to essentially gain four life um, is not going to win him the game. Like, maybe if I wasn't gaining life at the same time, that would have bought him time to kind of whittle away at my life total to win the game that way. But because I was gaining life with Queen's Agent, um, he wasn't actively working towards a game plan that was going to um, that was going to win. So um, he should have been trying to set up um, blocks to make favorable trades. Okay, well we got our five zero. Unclaimed territory, yay! And that means that we get our fancy fire mines research. Oddly enough, um, I'd rather have the Lana War Elf promo because I don't think I'm ever going to play fire mines research. Whereas I, I think I'll for sure be playing Lana War Elves, especially in standard proper. Um, but you know, this is a really cool art. Um, I think this is the only chance I'm going to have to get it, so might as well shoot for it. And um, you know. Going 5-0 definitely feels good, so I, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the videos. Uh, I think this deck is sweet. I think it definitely cleans up in a Healer's Hawk metagame. Um, the deck can definitely be improved. Uh, let's open it up real fast before wrapping up here. And yeah, I, as I said, I, I think more Wind Grace Acolytes and or Queen's Agents um, would be beneficial. Um could probably trim like hired poisoners um the eviscerate being another bombard would probably be fine um i could see another dark bargain in the deck since making those early land drops was kind of um a struggle sometimes um if uh you i don't i have no idea what you would cut for this but um I don't even think I have a copy because it's an Ixalan. Yeah, I need to not collect it. Okay. Yeah. So this guy, I think, would be reasonably good in this deck. Um, I, I guess that the... Ah, um, uh, what's the red guy's name? Brazen... Yeah, this guy would be fine as well. Just um, the explore mechanic is pretty good in this archetype since the deck is mana hungry. Um, you know, adding to the board uh, a four mana two two with either haste or menace um, or a four mana um, a four mana two two with haste or menace that draws you a card or a four mana three three that gets you closer to your land if you are digging for lands so I, I think these guys would be solid i don't think that they would be better than any of the cards currently in the deck though um but the a common pattern that we saw in those five games was we were just waiting to hit our you know fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth land drops um so explore would help i i'm hesitant to add, just add more lands to the deck because um there were some games where we were kind of getting mana flooded and then, um, you know, if all we're drawing is our removal and we're not drawing any of our 
top end or our card advantage, then Mono Flood is a really real way to lose the game. But um, I, I think that these Explore creatures would be a good way to kind of split the difference. Um, I, I could see a 24th land being in the deck too, though. Um, or, or just a fourth Dark Bargain. But yeah, I, I hope you enjoy the deck. Um, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Um, I will have a link to the deck list in, down in the comments as well. And then, uh, of course, last but not least... Um, so, uh, if you would like to support the content that we make here on this channel, standard proper content, um, or if you want to support Youth Magic here on Oahu, um, we run between one and three monthly, uh, just regular standard proper tournaments for the youth here on Oahu, and then um, twice a year we are running a uh, scholarship tournament. So if you want to support what we do, you know, of course, watching the videos, hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, great ways to support us. But if you would like to directly contribute to um, the project that we are running, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. All right, uh, that is all. Hopefully you had a good time. I definitely had a good time. And I will catch you next time. Peace.